Hi, it's O'Brien. I'm going to go over your next lab, your last lab of the year. Get excited. Um, we're going to be doing cyanotyping, uh, also known as blue printing or sun printing. So you can make a shirt like this, which is pretty awesome. Or, you know, um, you can do paper as well. So the way you do this is you mix two solutions together. First, we take ferric ammonium citrate. And you're going to make a 20% solution of that and mix it with potassium ferrocyanide. You're going to make an 8.1% solution of that. You're responsible for figuring out how, much, how many grams of each powder you need to put in water to make these solutions. Tap water is fine. Um, you mix them both in a one-to-one -one ratio. And then that makes Prussian blue which is also known as ferric ferrocyanide. And that is permanent. So once it turns this pretty color, it's not going anywhere. This is how they used to do blueprints before we had computers. Um, so th that's the recipe. And you put it onto either, once you mix your solution, you put it on either fabric or paper. You let it dry completely in the dark. And then you expose it to the sun. And once it turns that blue, it's six rounds. So let's talk about the procedure. Um, you're going to make the strength that I told you. I made, that. I made some solutions ahead of time. And again, you're doing this in the dark because you don't want it to turn before you're ready. So you'll make both solutions. And then you're going to mix them together. Now, for your first trial, mixing them together, a pipette of each is plenty. Because all you're going to do, so we have a mix there, all you're going to do is paint it on a square of paper. And it's this like bright yellow color. it on a square of paper and then you're going to let it dry completely in the dark. I already did some so it's completely dry. Then you're going to set up your sun print. So some examples of sun printing, things you can do. This was a cut out piece of paper that someone laid on top and let out the sun. This was a necklace. someone's keys. So you can sun print anything really or you can cut out your name. I've also made transparencies. This is a transparency of the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, or you can make a transparency of your face. I can give you directions on how to do that. But if you want to go that far, you're responsible for making your own transparency. For our example sun print, we're just going to do an object. So Here's our piece of paper. You're going to put that on a tray. I'm just going to do some scissors. Lay your object down and then put a piece of glass over it to kind of hold it down. I have extra glass. And I'm going to go set this outside, let it develop, and then we'll go over the benchmarks. So you'll let that develop. On a sunny day, it takes like five or 10 minutes. On a cloudy day, maybe more like uh, 20 or 30. We'll check that in a second. All right, so we brought our sun print in from outside. It doesn't look the dark blue that you expect. It kind of looks a little ugly, but you can see the difference. Now, that yellow is going to turn blue if it's exposed to the light. So it's just going to turn all blue, which is what we don't want. So we have to rinse off the solution before it reacts. So you want to rinse your paper or shirt or whatever you're doing gently until the water runs clear. So we don't see this yellow color here. You want to do it gently because these um, sinks are pretty powerful and will tear a hole right through your paper if you turn it on too strong. So once the water runs clear, you're good and you're just going to let this dry. And then it's going to get darker and darker and darker blue as it dries.
So what you're going to be responsible for, first, you're going to show me your lab notebook. In your lab notebook, you need to tell me how you're going to make the solution, and you need to include exact amounts. You just do not say an 8% solution of whatever. Say, put this many grams in this much water to make this strength solution. I do not want you wasting uh, my materials. So don't make 200 milliliters of solution. For the trial that you just saw me do, I was able to paint that piece of paper with a milliliter of each solution, and I have some left over. So be stingy. That's something I'm going to be checking for. Your first trial, you're just going to be painting a piece of printer paper, which I'm going to supply for you. You have to show me that. Then the next two trials, you need to bring in something of your own to print. So you can paint a nicer piece of paper, like watercolor paper. You have to supply that. Um, I brought in my sketch pad. That's what I was using. Fabrics work. Cotton, wool, all kinds of stuff. So if you want to make a nice t-shirt, you can do that. Trial three, again, you're going to supply the material that you're going to print but it has to be different from trial two. You can't just do two pieces of watercolor paper for trial two and three. And each time you print, I want it to get better. You need to show improvement through all your trials. Lastly, I'm gonna be checking your lab notebook again, and I'm gonna be checking for observations that you made, talking about the mistakes or the struggles that you had with your printing, and how you changed your procedure to get better at the printing. 